welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Today we're going to look at motion, and, and in particular, and in particular, particles. <laughs> particles in particular. Yes, we're yep. going to look at, uh, you're going to show us some things you can do with a particle generator in motion. That's five. right, Steve. Yeah, I'm going to try to show a little bit of um, uh, a couple of tricks, a couple of places you might get stuck when working with particles in well, motion. Well, first of all, why would I even want to work with a particle? Oh my God! I, I, let me count <laughs> is that ways. Open, yeah, is it open up particular particles, kind of worms? It, it does. Uh, particle, yeah, particles of worms. It, particles you can use to do all kind of great things. Let me just give you one example here. Okay. This is this is a transition created in motion for use in Final Cut Pro 10. Now you don't, of course, need. You don't have to make things for Final Cut Pro 10, but in this case, we have this kind of fall transition with these leaves passing through the scene. That looks familiar. That reveal. <laughs> yeah, this is one of our free effects. Yes. So we give away a weekly, every week, we give away some kind of free effect from Final Cut, for Final Cut Pro 10 that's made in motion, and this is one of those. But the reason I'm bringing it up here is I think it's a really useful to show something that if you're creating something with particles, somewhere you might get stuck. Now, I'm not building this from scratch, because it would take a little bit of time to do that, mm -hmm. but you can see I've got a bunch of leaves here and the leaves each are different angles, they're different sizes, they're actually moving at different speeds, so there's a lot of variation, but they all come from this single source image right here, this maple leaf. Uh, and if I select the emitter itself, which is here. That's the machine that spits out the leaves. Yeah, that's the machine that spits out the leaves, and in the emitter inspector, there's a whole bunch of controls. Yikes. And uh, I have a training we'll talk about that goes into detail mm -hmm. on how to, how to work these things, but just there's a lot of settings here that have adjusted with their speed randomness and angle randomness, and down here their scale randomness that creates sort of random look to these leaves and makes it look a lot more organic. A lot less mechanical. Right. Now, the one thing about it, though, is they're all exactly the same leaf? <laughs> they are the same leaf, yeah. <laughs> we'll do that later. <laughs> color, the same color. Oh, yeah. Yeah, same the same color. color. Right. right. So I want to change the color. And what you might, if you're working this out for the first time, you might go down to this place in the emitter inspector which says color mode. Oh, original. Let me see. Oh, colorize, over life, pick from color range. Oh, that means I could pick a different color for every leaf, right? So you right. select that and you get this gradient that shows up. Let me get a little closer so you can see what we're doing here. Color mode, pick from color ridge. There's this gradient, so the leaves should so go from light blue to dark blue. Light blue to dark blue. But if we go look at them, uh, they are looks... they are anything but. No. They're like brown I to some like blue sickening there, but... green. Yeah. So it's... what the heck's going on here? Like, okay, this is not working right. Actually, it is working right. The trick is that when you choose a color range or any of these color options, it's adding those colors to, to the to the actual color of the object. That, the source image, the source yeah. Of, yes. So this source image here that's turned off, we could turn it on, we could see it right it's there in the middle. It's already orange. Yeah, it's already orange, so it's trying to add this blue to the orange and you get this horrible color here. <laughs> yes. So the, the, the solution is to remove all the color from that source object. And the cool thing about particle images is anything you do to the source image, even though it's turned off. It'll happen to all the source images. It image, passes all, all through leads. to all the particles, right. Yeah. So I'm gonna go to the um, filter uh, button down here in the toolbar. This is kind of the shortcut to quickly grab right. a filter. I'm going to go to color correction and choose hue saturation. And by the way, if you use previous versions of motion before motion five, you might be used to a desaturate filter and it's not here. Let me zoom in here a little it's bit. You don't see it. Okay. Well, there's always been hue saturation, but desaturate has been deprecated or it's, it's been removed because you can do the same thing here. Yeah, it's yeah. self-deprecated. Yeah. <laughs> it's very shy. It <laughs> it doesn't want to come yeah, out. Like, no, do. you don't You don't need me. You've got this. What do you need me for? <laughs> exactly. So instead, we're going to choose hue saturation. And then in the heads-up display, we'll just drag the saturation slider all the way down. Ah, look at yeah. that. Now, the now cool thing, the it, we can see it there, but if we also look at the little preview thumbnail in the layers list, you can see that it's the sword jacket is, is grayscale, right? It's desaturated, and mm. now these colors pass through. So now, you know, it's still not a very good color. We could select this emitter, then go back to this gradient and select more interesting colors, like maybe um, sort of a brown and maybe sort of a... Uh, dark green, although they shouldn't be falling through, maybe sort of a yellow. Yeah. And that's not, you can click on here to add another color tag and maybe add a brighter red. Ooh, that's nice. So you can play around with this. And yeah, this is great. There's, uh, you can save this once you make it as a preset. Right. To use later. There's a bunch of presets in here you can choose. Any of your own will show up in there. It's really powerful. Mm -hmm. But the basic thing is if you desaturate that image, you have um, really the full control over the colors. Properly, right. Yes. Right. Now, I'll just show you one more little thing here. It's like, what if you didn't, you mentioned like it's all the same leaf. Okay, it's true, and it's all this maple leaf, but what if you wanted a different leaf, right? 
You want to use something else. Like well, an oak leaf or something? Like maybe an oak leaf. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> I happen to have an oak leaf, an oak leaf available. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So what I want to do is have this whole thing be exactly the same. The motion, the layout, the colors, the size, but just change that object. Okay? okay. And it's simply a matter of doing what's called exchanging the media. So what I'm going to do is drag this oak leaf over this same source object here and I get a little hooked arrow. Mm -hmm. That hooked arrow means that I'm exchanging the media. So if I release the mouse, oak leaves. and it makes this nice <laughs> No, you made that sound. My, okay, you're right, I made that <laughs> You can tell. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, nice yeah. though, I mean. Dude. Yeah, you just immediately can put in something now, else. Now I would imagine that you have a tutorial that shows them how, how you can keep both the oak leaves and the maple leaves to, on the same screen. Yeah, you can add, so the next step would be, wait, what if I want both or even more? Can I have multiple leaves? And there's all kinds of ways. You, the answer is yes. You can do any, pretty much anything you want with a yeah. particle system. And I'll actually just turn off that transition background. We can see a little more clearly yeah, what we've got here. It's contrast. Yeah, you can kind of see a little more contrast and you can see those little guys flowing through there. Nice. In this beautiful little transition. A little too green on those, but uh, we'll leave it where it is. So yes, I have a new training on particles, specifically about particles. It goes in depth about all kind of ways you can use particles for projects for Final Cut Pro 10 or for motion, but it, you make it all in motion. Uh, available at rippletraining.com. And this will yeah. be available now at rippletraining.com. All about particles, even 3D particles. Yeah, a lot of 3D. If you've never used motion before, it kind of eases you in to the basics, but if you've used motion, we go deep into 3D particle systems where cameras move through particles oh, in like, 3D he, space. He, he actually creates a particle ceiling, so like particles <laughs> fall down all, all over the top of you. It's, it's just awesome. <laughs> Anyway, uh, thanks for watching uh, MacBreak Studio, and go out and have fun in your own particle playground. I'm Steve from Ripple Training, and this is Mark. Thanks for watching.